Welcome to the Rusted Garden. Today is July 7th and I thought I'd give you a full tour of everything that's growing. Go over the names of the different plants. I want to talk about spraying flowers, the benefits of those. But most importantly, anytime you try a new spray in your garden, spray your plants, a couple of leaves, wait 48 hours, look for damage. There's a big change in how sprays affect your plants when the temperatures get up to 90, 95, 100 degrees. A spray that you used when it was 70 or 80 may damage your plants when the temperatures get up there. So when the temperatures get high, you want to cut back on your oil sprays, your oil sprays on your soapy sprays. Try and use only what you need. Spray in the morning, spray in the evening when it's cooler. These are my container tomatoes that I've been showing off since uh, we did the planting videos. They're doing extremely well. They do have a uh, leaf spot on there. They're being treated with a wettable sulfur spray. That's my Rutgers tomato. Lots of tomatoes on there. Coming over here we have the Bradley, which is a semi-determinate. Most of these are determinate tomatoes, which mean they're going to get to a set height, produce fruit, and then die off. Uh, the whole goal with spraying is, of course, you want to prevent the diseases coming, but here in Maryland Zone 7, they just come. So my goal is to slow the disease so they don't kill off the plants. That's a Baxter bush. Here is my Rutgers doing really, really well. You can see on there I have a wettable, wettable sulfur spray and I'm experimenting with that. And as we go through um, the garden, you'll see uh, these little shims that you see right there. Like that one says glacier. I have marked on there um, sulfur spray, two leaves, three leaves, because I'm testing it out. I want to see what happens. I'm not too worried about these. I covered all the plants because they're going to die off anyway. But they're getting three tablespoons of wettable sulfur in one gallon of water. That is my glacier. This one over here was uh, mountain gold. I've got a couple of pepper plants. This guy's going to get into the ground now. That's another determinate variety. And this one is my Siberian. Got a hops vine growing in there. It's doing really well. Kind of an experiment. These are all the geraniums that I talked about in the, I think, a tour video that I got for a dollar a plant. They were beat up. They came back nicely. Tiny Tim tomatoes looking good. I'm going to pick a lot of those. This is a pick a bushel for an All America Selections winner, a compact plant. And I really want to kind of give you a quick overview from here. You can see I have a lot of flowers. They bring in bees, beneficial insects, and butterflies. And you can see I got my cone flowers, yarrow, daisies, coreopsis, butterfly bush all over there. Going up the hill, more flowers. Really bring flowers to your garden. Perennials come back year after year. Once you put them in, they keep coming back. Coming down this way. My hot pepper garden right in here, doing extremely well. These are not getting sprayed. Another tip is, don't spray your plants that tend to do well. You don't need to put extra sprays on plants if they don't get diseases. So for instance, keep a journal. My peppers rarely get any problems, so don't put any extra sprays on them. You don't need to, you just don't need to do it. Save yourself money, save yourself time. Sweet peppers going right in there bunch of banana peppers and I'm packing these as I've said before really closely together to see if they grow and well actually I do know they grow I've been packing them together tightly um, for years this year I'm putting them even more closely together packing in more plants and I want to see you know what the reward is from really densely planting your peppers closely together and so far it's paying off they look pretty good spinning it around this way those are some purple green beans. And you can just see, tomatoes are coming up now. Those are my indeterminate varieties. They've been sprayed with a different spray, always test spraying. And this is a baking soda spray on them. And I've used that regularly and it doesn't hurt the plants. Here are the hop vines that I've been showing off. They took off. I planted these midsummer last year. They established and now they're just doing incredibly well and the flowers are coming on there. I will be making beer. Let's spin around to this side. Transform this over. I'll attach the video, but this is where I had all my seed starting uh, plants that I started indoors, stuff I was starting outdoors, but they've all gotten planted. So now I've transformed this over to my herb area. 
couple of tips. Basil, don't buy it in the store for a three dollar plant. Cilantro, don't buy it in the store for a three dollar plant. Get seed packs. These are all seed packs. Two dollars. I have plenty of seed. Four bucks to last the entire year here. Let me just show you real quick. Black Beauty eggplant back there. Great container plant. This is the Ichiban, Ikiban. <laughs> Always kills me how to pronounce some of these things. I think it's Ichiban actually. That's the purple potatoes. They are ready to come out. I'll be doing a video on that. All right, let's walk over to the other side of the garden. This is my second pepper garden. These are all the hot peppers. Small plant down there is a habanero. Um, they always grow slowly, so your halbs are really the last ones to mature and get going. Hungarian wax, if you like a early producing hot pepper, the Hungarian wax is wonderful. I have the red cayenne back there. They're green, of course, right now, but they will be turning red soon. Jalapenos, some of them are ready to be picked. I'll be doing harvesting uh, really today. Sweet peppers in here, mixed in. I mean, look at, they're just doing really, really well. No disease on the pepper. Again, don't spray your plants that don't need to be sprayed. Okay, let's go back to the main garden. More determinate container tomatoes, subarctic max. Some fruit ready to be picked. Another early girl in there, and that is my celery fir. Been getting a lot of tomatoes off of there. Coming around this way, my dwarf tomato collection. You saw the tiny Tim up top. It's a really prolific, compact tomato. This is my Hams Gelba. I took German, so I know I pronounced that right. And it's really, I think Hams is a person's name. Gelba means yellow. It's really, really small, beautiful yellow tomato. So this is the smallest tomato I've seen, and I want to thank the person that sent me the seeds. The subscriber sent them to me. More basil. Again, grow your basil from seed. It grows extremely, extremely fast. This is my green stock container. I'm going to be doing a video on that. You can uh, check out the description if you want to see more about this container. But it is packed full of peppers and herbs and it's doing really, really well. Coming this way, this is my goji berry. I transplanted that at the beginning of the season. And it's doing well. This is one of the figs that was in the Rusted Garden show back in January. Um, maybe beginning of February. It has taken off nicely. In here, my Concord grape, I think it was, died during the transplant, but it did send up a new vine, so I'm gonna let that grow. And in place, I, I didn't know this was gonna be coming up, and you can see I tossed in some more basil right there. I bought a pixie grape. It's supposed to be a dwarf grape, so we're gonna see how that really does. Let's take a walk, well, right up here. More wildflowers. This is from a seed collection I sell at my shop. They're doing really well. All the way back there is my cold compost. And I wanna actually, let me move over here slowly. This is the composter that I'm using. These were all coffee grounds. I'll be doing a follow-up video on this. Completely composted, no, uh, no odor. It's what we call black gold. But that is gonna be a top dressing on most of my tomato plants this year when I get to that. So coming back over this way, I have patio choice tomatoes up here, another All-America selection winner. Got my cucumbers in. Here's my pepper area surrounding my blueberries. More indeterminate tomatoes. They're all taking off. Everything is really growing nicely. With respect to spraying, again, I know that leaf spot can be in my area. It hasn't been around for three years, but it came back this year. But early blight rolls in about now. So if you know you have diseases that come in, start spraying ahead of time to prevent them from getting hold of your plants. Watermelons, I'm going to grow some of the vines up a cage. The other ones I'll let, you know, wander their way around on top of the mulch. That's doing well. More tomatoes. Everything is growing nicely. More indeterminate tomatoes, just want to show you, right in front of me is where the sun tracks from the left of your screen to the right. So right in here, back there I have Asian red beans, five plants, another uh, Space, Master, Space Master bush type cucumber. I'm going to build a wall right up through here where they're going to hang. And this way when the sun's here, it will hit the tomato plants. And then when it tracks over to here, it's going to hit the tomato plants. So if you do your walls or your tall plants perpendicular 
to where the sun is, it's not going to cast a shadow on this half of the garden, and this way I can grow more in this space. Um, so be mindful of how you're growing your tall plants and where the shadows are going to fall from the sun when the sun is at its uh, main area for the day, from usually from like 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Want to really stress having perennial flowers in your garden or seeding flowers. The Coreopsis reseeds, the purple cone flower you see there comes back year after year. I have cilantro in there that reseeds. They are all wonderful for attracting bees, pollinators, beneficial insects. And this is in my central part of my garden so that everything is flying over my plants to the flowers and then they do stop at the cucumbers, the squash, the zucchini and take care of pollinating. More container peppers from All America Selections. I have a sweetie pie. Uh, I think that is called Sweet Sunset right there. Giant Rista. Carnito Gallo, which is yellow, Spanish I think, and that's the Escamillo back there. I am developing, or I'm actually creating videos for All America Selections YouTube channel if you want to look them up. We don't run any ads there, so you can go and watch garden videos without having to watch ads. Another bed, one, two, three, four, five indeterminate tomatoes. Got onions, leeks, turnips back there. This is the area where I'm shooting my uh, large beefsteak series. That's the plant that is challenging Cali Kim. They've all been sprayed down. And I want to show you. So one plant has gotten sulfur spray. That's three tablespoons to one gallon. Just this plant, top of the leaves, bottom of the leaves testing it out again. I did, decided to do the whole plant. Hopefully it doesn't die off, but I think it'll be okay. Garlic is ready to come out. This is where I'm doing my eggshell and banana experiment. They're not getting fed anything except eggs and bananas that I buried down in the soil. Fig uh, tree came back with a vengeance. A lot of dead wood. I'll be cutting all that out. More tomatoes. This is my sulfur spray. Two leaves. So I sprayed those two leaves top and bottom with the sulfur spray again a three to one ratio same thing over there on two cucumber leaves and the reason being is sulfur spray will act differently on cucumbers zucchini tomatoes so you have to test the spray not just on one plant but on all of the different varieties you're going to spray got a trellis set up for some parisian gherkins and Pick a bushel, cucumbers again, other All America selections winners. More tomatoes. The garden is coming in nicely. Really, I really recommend that you practice test spraying before you put any sprays out in your garden. Sprays are effective, but you have to know how they work at 70 degrees, 80 degrees, 90 degrees, and even hotter. And when it gets into the 90s, try and not use your sprays if you can. If you have gut disease, you have to use them. If you have bugs, you have to use them. But then go ahead and spray in the morning or, you know, in the evening. Hope you enjoyed the tour. Gives you some ideas of what you might do in your garden. Please check out my seed shop at www.therustedgarden.com. Thanks for watching.